All right, all right, everybody. We're going to start here in about 10 minutes with Mark Petrino, Chief Educator at the Benzinga Trading School with us today. Currently, he's with the students right now. That's why he's not with us like this second, but he's about to finish that session and we're going to get things started here. So get everything ready. Do what you got to do. Get your popcorn, pen and paper, uh, pull up your charts. We're going to be talking about stocks, setups, education, trade ideas, portfolio recovery, a whole bunch of different things today. So uh, make sure you do not miss this session. We also are gonna be giving away a special prize at the end, okay? For those here that decide to join Mark's, um, Mark's curriculum, we have a special prize for those guys too. So stick around, you don't wanna miss this session on it, trust me. We'll start in about eight minutes and we'll get the thing going eight, nine minutes or so.
What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome. We have a great session for everybody planned today. Trust me, Mark Petrino. Uh, a lot of you guys know Mark from the Benzinga Trading School. Other you guys know him because he's he used to trade with uh, Steve Cohen and Mario Gibelli, two of the biggest legends out there on Wall Street. Uh, but yes, we're, we're going to have a great session here with Mark. We're going to talk about trade ideas, setups, education, uh, a couple things that he's doing there that's working out for the for the students. And uh, just what's going on in the markets, right? We're going to dig into the charts. We're going to talk with, you know, with the chat, engage, participate. By the end of this session, it, it could be an hour. It could be two hours. I don't know. It depends on the energy. But, like, um, make sure to participate. Ask questions um, so that we can make it a better, you know, uh, more fruitful uh, session for everybody. And in the chat, let me know when you're ready to start. Shout out here to Adolphus, Anil, David, Greg's in the house, Jeff. Kitzel, we got Linda. Linda's always on time. What's up, Linda? Uh, Mihail, Monty, Pele, Ray Ray. All right, Roger. We got a good crew here, some familiar faces. So uh, sounds good. I think we um, I think we have a good enough group here to get it going. What's up, Maria? Um, and uh, without further ado, guys, let me introduce here Mark Petrino, Chief Educator at the Benzinga Trading School. How are we doing, Mark? I'm doing good, Rodrigo. How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's a crazy day in the markets, but I know that there was a lot of uh, the classes today were pretty nice. I was able to, uh, you know, go through them uh, today. Um, but yeah, how was how was the uh, how was the lesson today? How how was everything going there? Uh, things are going well. You know, things are going well. Um, we, you know, with all this inflation going on people are starting to get a little freaked out, right? And today's class was one of the A classes we do. Today's class was investment psychology. So it's kind of a good time to really be thinking about that because people are starting to get a little, you know, freaked out and pretty soon maybe the selling is going to come to a climax and that'll be a good time to buy or maybe some of the stuff in the commodities that's getting really overbought um will you know start to reverse but the thing is you know I, I i like to tell this to the class right it's like um trade ideas and trade models are like having a home gym you know it's a great idea but if you don't stick to your discipline and if you don't just stick to your system it's actually not going to work so you know the greatest system in the world doesn't work if no one if, if you don't follow it so there's just a lot going on you know there's a lot to talk about obviously with inflation um, in the class, we've been bearish on the market for, I don't know, probably a month or two now because the headline things were good. You know, Apple was still going up. Uh, Facebook was still going up. A lot of the stuff underneath the market, the stuff that you don't really look at every day, like a lot of the penny stocks that were booming, you know, a year ago or so were, you know, heading lower. So this is a good time to be in a trading class because there is certainly a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I can tell you that like when, when I started it, I mean, it's, uh, there, I mean, COVID ended up being like the biggest thing, you know, there was like one theme in the markets, but you have like three or four at this moment. And keep in mind, we don't know, Mark, if like, you know, we could get a variant out of nowhere that could just be like the cherry on, uh, you know, on top of the cake. So, um, I think it's great to know really how to protect yourself in these cases because you, we can't predict the future, but you can also always provide a good foundation so that, you know, the students can be prepared, whatever it is, right? If it's a, if it's a downturn or if it's a rip higher, you're, you're able to, you know, trade that. And I was, I was just showing him, uh, showing here a couple of the things there, the video library, all the recordings are there. Yeah, you get Benzinga Pro, um, but um but yeah, uh, if you want, Mark, we can go ahead and um, and start sharing your screen there. Um, or I'm not sure if you're in the school there. If you want to go ahead. Uh, yeah, there we go. How's that? All right, so you should be seeing wheat futures here. Um, but let me just uh, let me just take a little stroll back over the last few months here because this is the Benzinga trading school right it's not the like how Mark Petrino trades trading school so it's 
people have different strategies. People have different time frames. Sometimes we get our ideas from from technical stuff. Uh, sometimes we look at economic things. You know, it's trading is not a chess game. It's a poker game. Whereas in chess, the rules are always the same. In poker, you know, the rules are the same, but the game changes because the person you're playing poker against, they might have different emotions and show you different signs. And in the market, we're always looking at a human on the other side. So just to kind of get things going here, I want to, and if, you know, you were here the last time, I apologize for the redundancy, but this, I think, is a really important thing to look at here. And in the class, we are not surprised to see all this inflation. And frankly, I think inflation is a bigger problem than people even think. And we're going to have our CPI number on Thursday morning. And I think it's going to be even higher than people think. And I'm going to show you why. And one of the first things that really kind of clued us in on this was when this company, Tyson Chicken, reported their earnings a few months ago. So this was an, an idea that came out of an earnings report, which gave us insight into the economy, which led to a technical trading idea that some of the students were really able to you know, make a nice profit on. So people always say, well, where do you get your trading ideas? And the answer is they come from a whole lot of different places. It, it all depends on what's going on in the market. So I want to just point out this Tyson real quick, because back here on February 7th, this company reported earnings and they were blowout numbers. The stock was up huge. It was up 12%. I mean, these guys sell chickens, right? I mean, you know, they raise chickens, they sell chickens. So this was a good thing to focus on, I thought, because we have all this talk now about the supply chain, right? And what could influence or what would have more exposure to the supply chain than something that produces something like chickens, right? They have farms, they have trucks, they have tractors, they have oil exposure. It's not the same so much as like a technology company. So we read these earnings and we got some pretty interesting insight. The reason why the numbers were so well and why the stock skyrocketed initially was because Tyson had to raise their prices. So company raises prices, you know, makes sense. They have earnings better than thought. So headline numbers were, we beat earnings, the stock, stock skyrocketed. But we delved into the numbers a little bit and, you know, it's not a deep fundamental class. We didn't sit there and study the, you know, the balance sheet for hours. We just went through the presentation that the CEO and the management team gave. Um, usually with a big company, when they release the earnings, there's a little investor presentation. So it became apparent right away that there was something going on. The reason why they had to raise their prices was because the cost of their inputs had gone up so high. You know, they're raising chickens. What do what are their inputs? The cost of grain, the cost of wheat, corn, whatever it is that you feed chickens. So as it turns out, the numbers on the headline were good, but if you delved a little bit deeper into them, they weren't so good. So we kind of expected this reversion here to happen. And from a technical point of view, this turned into a trade because when things get overbought or oversold, or they make a big move on, uh, you know, an over-exaggeration, like something like this, the headlines look good, they tend to reverse. But as traders, we don't want to really get into a trade until we get a good idea that the reversion has actually happened. You don't want to guess. You know, this thing could have kept going up. So we noticed that this particular level here was important. And when it broke, it became a technical trading idea. And the stock went lower and it reached our target. And, you know, it, it became a, this happened in one day here. So this was like a one day profit where a lot of the students, especially the opposite traders really um, made out well. But hey Mark, uh, yeah. really quick. So just to clarify, this is a trade. So, so there is education in the trading school, correct? You have eight chapters, all that stuff, class Monday to Friday, but there's also trade ideas. These are, this is a trade idea that you provided the students. Is that correct? Or Oh, yeah, because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're here to try to figure out how to trade. So we talk about a lot of the different fundamentals. 
Um, some of the fundamentals of markets are the fact that we have important levels, the fact that certain things can be overbought or oversold. The fundamentals never change, but the markets do. So this was something we just started kind of as a brainstorming thing, and it turned into trading ideas. And, you know, that's kind of what we do. We spend the first half an hour or so of the class reviewing market fundamentals. What's the support level? What's the resistance level? Then we look into the actual market in real time, as opposed to me showing you a book I wrote saying, hey, last April, look how great I made this call. So we apply those principles to the market in real time. And then the end of the, you know, the plan is to try to have that turn into trading ideas. And sometimes, you know, depending on what's going on in the market, there's a lot of ideas. Sometimes there's only a few ideas. Sometimes, I mean, it's very rare where there's, there's, you know, something that doesn't really stick out as some kind of a trading idea. But so this exaggeration in the numbers or this misinterpretation, this missing what should have been so obvious to all these highly paid Wall Street people that there's inflation going on was very telling. All right. So first of all, it led to this idea that, you know, we had this technical trade, it got overbought. So that's one thing. Another thing this told us was that, wait a second, if Wall Street is really so wrong about these numbers in terms of they're not even thinking about how quick prices are going up, then they're missing a lot of other things. So this was a real good sign that inflation is worse than expected. Now, for the people that aren't traders, for the longer term people, and Rodrigo, before this is over, people are going to say, is DBC still a buy? 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 The answer is yes, DBC is still a buy. So I will answer that question now. So later I can defer you back to this moment. And and so, just to be clear, just to be clear here, I know I know that everybody now is, and I and I feel I always end up doing this, right? But look, it's it's just how things have happened, Mark. August, right? August, you called the bottom oil sixty dollars. The school hadn't even started at that point, but we had a lot of members that were there, like pre-enrollees, you could say. Uh, so the real OGs. I don't know if there's any here in this call. But those do remember when Mark made that call at six, when oil was 60, of course, we were buying the oil stocks, but um, calling the bottom oil on, on 60 on oil, pretty much from there rallying on, right? Starting positions and things like that. And people that the school hadn't even started and the people were already making money with these trade setups that you give them. But if you would have just bought at 60, whatever stock oil at this point, um, that's, you know, that I, that I think, you know, is just something on top of the education that you're also, you also can get these sort of trade ideas that, you know, you've been following up on. These are not things that you just woke up and said, oh, oil looks good. You know, maybe it's the day to buy, you know, that you've been following oil for 20 plus years and, you know, your career and all this stuff. So this is the benefit, I guess. Of Yeah. I mean, it's, um, you know, the markets are always changing and like anyone who, anyone can write a book and talk about how they were such a, such a genius and they, you know, had this call right and they had that call right. But that's not what training is all about, right? That's like saying, you know, oh, you can learn how to play the guitar in an hour or, uh, you know, take an hour lesson and you can learn how to play the guitar, you know, or, you know, spend $500 on my system and you can be a piano master in three hours. You know, nothing that's worth doing works that fast. But that being said, I'm not saying you need to spend, you know, five years studying charting to become really good at it. I can teach, you know, I'm teaching a lot of the stuff that I've kind of figured out over the years. And a big part of it is that it's not as complicated as people seem to think. You know, a lot of beginners think that there's some secret system or some magic formula. Um, and that's why the people that are the greats are, are great. And that's just not true. And I'm someone who's actually worked, you know, literally shoulder to shoulder with, with some of them. And I can tell you with a hundred percent guarantee, you know, that's just not the case. There's no such thing as some secret model that always works. Um, so if you're looking for that, you know, it's, you're probably not going to find it 
here. But what always works is fundamentals and principles. And what are they? Certain things. Now, Rodrigo just talked about back here. This was before the trading school got started. And I remember this pretty clearly because I remember it was a weekend. And this day here was a Friday and this day here was a Monday. So I don't know if it was Saturday or Sunday, whenever the boot camp was. But I said, you know, hey, look, there's a good chance that oil could rebound here. Was it because of my secret formula or anything like that? No. One of the principles in markets is that certain price levels are more important than others. Another principle is that when things get overextended, they tend to rebound or revert. When we talk about a stock's momentum or a commodity's momentum or a market's momentum, every one of these you know, securities has a historical or typical trading range. If it gets really jacked up above that or really aggressively bought above that, we call that overbought. If it gets really pounded down below that, we call that oversold. Now, why do we care? Because a lot of trading systems and traders work strategies that are based upon the concept of reversion to the mean. So when things are overbought and are oversold, they tend to reverse. Now, let's take that a step farther. When something gets to a support level, they tend to stop going lower. At support levels, there's a lot of demand for the stock or the security, or in this case, oil. So oversold markets that get to support tend to bounce. So when I talked about that here, I wasn't doing anything special. I just say, hey, you know, oil is at a level that was support before. It's really oversold. This indicator indicates or shows oversold conditions. And that sets up the recipe for a bounce. And I don't want to say it's easy, but it doesn't need to be complicated. Just understanding these basic principles of oversold markets that get to resistance, or sorry, get to support tend to bounce. You know, it, it doesn't need to be that complicated. So that was back in August. So let's forward to early December. This big red line down here on oil, this was the, um, the day after Thanksgiving where everyone talked about Omnicron, right? So we go into this big sell-off and we talked about this in the school because um, at this point the school was going. But what happened on this particular day here? The low trade was 62.50, pretty much right where the low trade was on this day. Also, as you can see on this indicator here, we had an oversold reading. This particular indicator is called the RSI. It just measures how far something has moved in a 14 time period frame. So if it gets to an excess, we you know get below this red line. If it gets to an excess on the top, we get above it. So the same thing that made me suggest that there's a good chance there's a bottom here made me suggest that there's a bottom here and that turns into profits. So levels, trends, momentum, these are the things that we pay attention to. So now if I go back to the Tyson uh, food situation real quick, All right, we got our idea, like I said, from the earnings. But what did we use here for a level for our, our trade? Or what did we think about for our trade? Well, first of all, the momentum shows we were overbought. There, whenever something gets to a round level, like $100, there's a good chance it runs into support or resistance, whether you know if it's on the way up or on the way down. Because people like round levels. And this is what we call a psychological level. There's really no logical reason why $100 should be important. It has nothing to do with the value of the company or anything like that. But we have something that was overbought, got to a level where there was a good chance there was going to be resistance, and we started to sell off. Where did we have our price target? It ended up exceeding it. But remember, this was a short trade, so we were looking for it to go down. This level that was resistance ended up being support for a few days here. Levels that were resistance can become support because people that sell, you know, when 
when it goes down, they think they did a great job, but when it goes higher, they regret their decision and they decide to buy it back. So we took, you know, what's going on in the market, or at least what's going on with this, and really basic common sense stuff, and turned it into a really profitable trading idea that occurred within literally two days. And, you know, we're talking about something that was down here 3.3%. May not sound like a lot, but if you're an options trader, there were some of the students, I think, even doubled their money, if not even more, you know. Um, so part of being a trader is having the patience to, to sit on the sidelines and to know when to act. And that's what we do as these markets evolve. We're coming up with these different ideas. So this is one of the things that really clued us in on inflation. And this was the beginning of February. So now we go back to this DBC and let me explain this a little bit more. This is not really for, well, I mean, shorter term traders trade it, but this is for something that even if you're not a short term trader, because remember the Benzinga Trading School teaches longer term timeframes, shorter term timeframes. We cover a whole variety of different things. Now, if you're someone who's concerned about inflation, who's not really an active trader, but an investor, and even if you're not an investor, but you think you should be doing something to protect your future, well, this particular ETF follows the price of commodities or a basket of commodities. Inflation is, by definition, when the price of commodities goes higher. So as long as inflation keeps going up, this is going to keep going up. Now, we just look at those Tyson chicken numbers, right? And that was early February. So the shorter term traders, you know, were able to profit from that trade I just showed you. And even some of the shorter term traders are putting this in kind of their longer term holdings type of thing, because that's when we really started to see that inflation was going to really start to get heated up. And you will notice this was before we were really even talking about um, this holding with Ukraine. So we saw, I mean, I didn't expect it to jack up like this, but I think it would probably would have gone to this level, you know, maybe in May or June. Um, but what I want to show people, Rodrigo, is that mm -hmm. it's not just a one hit wonder school. Like, oh, here's your trade of the day. Here's your trade of the day. There are so many different ways to approach this that it almost, you know, regardless of what your style is, if you're a scalper, if you're a day trader, if you're a swing trader, if you're someone who just wants to have a buy and hold type thing, you know, yeah. we don't want can... inflation, right? It sucks. But there are ways that we can hedge ourselves and even profit from it. And that's one of the reasons why we're traders, right? And I just I just looked up the DBC, but you can actually buy options on that stuff, too. That's crazy. But um, so, I mean, inflation is the talk of the street right now. It's it's I mean, I don't know how longer it'll be. I don't think it'll be three, four five years. Who knows? But I think that's really the good the benefit there of having your experience there, because, yeah, right now, inflation is the talk, the talk of the street. But, you know, in one year from now, we're going to have something else and then we're going to be looking at different things and, you know, positioning yourself according to the market. I think that's pretty um, four by four all terrain, Mark Petrino. <laughs> So that's yeah, because really you know nice. what, you're never going to outguess the market. No, you know, no one in the history of humankind, at least that I know of, is smart enough to outguess the market. So that's why, you know, people say to me, Rodrigo, like, gee, Mark, you know, you make a lot of really great calls. But I say, I'm not making calls. I'm just looking at what the market's doing. What I'm doing is not, you know, rocket science. I don't have a crystal ball and I don't have, you know, I'm not like some super genius, you know, whatever triple black belt ninja trader or anything like that. We just look at the markets and we let the market kind of tell us what to do. Um, and that's yeah, where the best ideas come from. And that's kind of going back to today's class, Rodrigo, is the investment psychology. Part of being a good trader is having the patience of waiting for the good trades to come along. I yeah. know that's kind of <laughs> hard for people to do because they get kind of yeah. antsy. And that's one of the reasons why we have class every morning. Because every now and then those trades pop up. But when you have the discipline and the patience to wait for those good trades to come along, it makes life a lot easier because the odds are much 
it's not a guarantee, but the odds are much more stacked in your favor. And, and that's what nobody talks about, right? And I think that's why it's important to mention that you do have a class called investment psychology, which is my favorite class. I like psychology, but in trading, you don't really hear about that stuff, right? You just, um, you, you really don't hear about these kind of things and the investment part of it. Keep in mind, um, I do think it's a huge benefit that, you know, you do that, Mark, because you do have that institutional training and background. Um, so you, you have that mentality, right? You don't trade like an emotional trader, like a retail trader does, um, which ultimately is just the biggest killer of all, right? When you're emotionally trading. Yeah. And I mean, people, people lose money because they get emotional. And when you get emotional, you make dumb decisions. And it's not just in trading, it's in any aspect of life. Now, I will tell you this, you know, when I worked for Stevie Cohen, who is, you know, arguably the greatest trader, you know, in history, certainly of our time, there was literally a full-time psychiatrist on staff. Now, I wasn't a big wig back then. I wasn't a big shot. So I wasn't high enough up the food chain there to actually go talk to the psychiatrist. But, you know, it's like people's psychology goes against them. And even in the greatest, you know, the biggest hedge fund people, the, the people that retail traders think like, oh, you know, these guys have these perfect systems. I mean, think about it. The big successful funds literally have psychologists and psychiatrists on staff. And it's just like a sports psychologist. Like if you're, you know, like in a basketball team, like I'm sure professional basketball teams have sports psychologists, you know, just because a guy who, you know, like, you know, say Michael Jordan started missing a couple jump shots. He's probably not a good example because he's so good, but, you know, he's got the skill, but he somehow lost his focus or got unnerved. So they probably have a sports psychologist that kind of keeps them in the groove. And I guess what I'm trying to say is this is, you know, if one of the greatest traders who's ever lived basically tells me that, hey, the secret is your psychology. That's something I'm going to listen to. And this is one of the reasons why that people can have paper trading strategies and be really successful. But when they actually put their money in the market, they end up losing because paper trading is easy because your emotions aren't involved. So I'm not against paper trading, but a lot of other people that do what I do will be like, oh, you know, you should paper trade until the, you know, the chickens come home to roost. Paper trading is easy. My thought or my advice is to come up with your strategy, whatever fits. And that's what we talk about in lesson eight, Rodrigo. Lesson six today is psychology. Tomorrow, yeah. we're going to be looking at the broader markets. That's our lesson. And we could do some of that now. But um, anyway, our trading model stuff is on, is on, uh, is our lesson eight. But well, it's, it's easy to come up with successful trading models on paper. But when you actually try to apply them to the real market, that's the totally problem. Different. And that's where most people fail. Yeah. And really, if you don't have the right psychology for it, right, like you don't have the right approach to it or the right expectations, nothing will work, right? Because you're going to get too angsty or you're going to overtrade or you're going to, you know, it's, yeah, it's a lot of different factors. But I think the psychology part is great to to put it in there because it does help with everything else, right? All the other things that you're teaching, the patterns, the momentum, levels, trends, um, all that stuff. Yeah, that stuff is all meaningless if you can't control yourself. You know, you can have the all that great knowledge, but if you can't actually just, you know, have the self-discipline to make yourself stick to your strategy, it's not going to work. You could have the greatest home gym in the history of mankind. If you don't actually get in there and use it, you know, you're not going to get ripped and get into really good shape, right? It's kind of the same type of thing. It's like, you know, Mike Tyson says, right? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And that's what happens with trading. On paper, it's easy. On paper, okay, well, I said to myself, if it got to 50, I would sell it. You know, it's at 40, went to 42, went to 44, went to 48. It got to 50, I sold it. Oh, on paper, that looks great. Think about real life now. You buy something at 40 goes to 42. It's like, oh man, you know, now I got a profit. You know, say hypothetically you bought a thousand shares. It's like, oh, I got a 2,000 share profit. Should I take it? I mean, that's a lot of money. Have a good weekend, you know, 
or should I let it roll? Now it goes up a little bit more. You know, it's like human instinct makes you want to take that profit and it affects everyone. So people that are listening right now that this has happened to, you know, don't, you're not alone. The greatest traders in the history of mankind feel this same emotion and instinct. But you can see what I mean. On paper, it's easy to let something ride. But when you start calculating that into real dollars, it's like, wow, you know, I could I could pay my, uh, you know, I could pay my rent if I sell it now. It's five dollars below my target. But, you know, I could pay my rent. I mean, it's just it becomes such a big thing of head games. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, trading emotionally, it just doesn't have any good results. You know, like it's um, it's not a strategy you should use. Some people don't even know it. Right. But like, um, I guess that kind of happens when you trade without a plan and. Look, I mean, the brokerages, of course, get rich out of rookie traders going in there, blowing up their money, buying calls and things like that. Um, but we're trying to do something different here, right? So it's one thing to, you know, provide, you know, trading services like a brokerage and things like that. But when it comes to the education, that's something that's a little bit more one-on-one-ish, Mark, because like you, you were telling me before, everybody has a different style and you can't just like do a one-size-fits-all with trading, Right. Everybody might have a different personality that they might, some things might work for them that don't work for others. Um, maybe you can, you know, elaborate a little bit on that because that seemed like a um, something good that folks could learn from here. Yeah, it's, that's why it's called the trading school and not the Mark Petrino trading idea schools. Because say you go to get a degree in finance and an investment, right? There are so many different investment styles and there's not one that's better than the other. It all really kind of depends on your personality. Some people really, you know, they have high energy. They really want to be active. They want to look at the markets. They want to have an active trading community they talk to. They want to scalp. They want to trade. You know, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with it. For some people, that really fits their personality. And they can make money doing something they like, you know talking to other people, sharing ideas. Some people are on the complete other side of the spectrum. You know, maybe they want to just not, you know, talk to other people, you know, shut off the news or whatever, and just sit there and read, you know, balance sheets and income statements. Now, to me, that is incredibly boring, and I would rather go the first route, but that's just me. That's just my personality. There are people that get very successful because, they really like delving into the numbers of a company. It's almost like forensic accounting. Like what can I find in this puzzle of all these numbers that shows me things are either better or worse than other people think. And we talk about things like that too. So it's, you know, I think I believe that, or I think that regardless of what your style is, or even if you, you may not even know what your style is. If you're just getting into this, you may be very confused because you hear all this, all this stuff, you know, well, should I be a technical trader? Should I be a fundamental trader? Should I use moving averages? Blah, blah, blah. It's very confusing. It's a very confusing landscape out there because people are trying to sell you all these one hit wonders or all these, you know, a better way to build a mousetrap and to be really successful. That's just, that's just not how it works. You know, a good analogy is if, say, you go to take karate, right? You don't just go hire the sensei to go kick someone's ass. It's like, oh, you know, sen- oh, I'm going to go study, you know, Shotokan karate. Oh, hey, sensei, I want you to go, you know, this guy bullied me, you know, last year. Go beat, beat him up for me. No, that's not how it works. You hire the sensei to teach you how to, you know, fight within that style, but still within your own kind of a personality thing. So, you know, we have people, Rodrigo, that are students, like college students that just want to really learn how the markets work and not the ridiculous nonsense that, you know, their professors are teaching them about things like efficient market theory. So it's a it's it's an educational thing. It's not a, you know, check in for the trade of the day. And if, you know, it goes great, great. And if it doesn't, well, then we never see you again. It's a, you know, it's a process and the students are forming relationships. Um, yeah, I noticed that. Some of them are pretty, I mean, they all help each other out. It's like, here's the thing, Mark. 
like if you go to, I mean, we obviously have different experiences with trading. I just started like, you know, three years ago, something like that. So when I started, you know, there wasn't really much of trading schools, things like that. It was just like these pump and dump chat rooms, um, these discords, super sketchy with like fake bots, fake accounts, bots, you know, things like that. <laughs> so it was just like the jungle, dude, like super unregulated, things like that. And it was just crazy, right? I, re- I didn't really find anything in public forums really that that worked, right? All that stuff just, and, I, and I've heard from a lot of traders that really, that's something that they sometimes like, they'll just have to go through that, right? Oh, you know, we'll, we'll join this Discord chat, right? And uh, get these alerts and things like that, but there's no education, nothing like that. So, um, well, you know, here's kind of one of the reasons for that, Rodrigo, is up until two months ago, you know, with the exception of the COVID crash, which in terms of the stock market was almost an anomaly because it was a crash, but it came back within two months. A lot of these so-called experts have never really seen a bad market. They've never been in a down market. And like they say, the rising tide lifts all boats. Well, that's why a lot of people that thought this was an easy game a year ago have been getting wiped out. I mean, a lot, I, I mean, let's think about this, right? The definition of a correction, market down 10%. Definition of a bear market down 20%. You know, and there's no official definition, but just what the street takes. Definition of a crash, you know, 20% in one day. There are some stocks that were the um, Reddit favorites a year ago, like literally a year ago, or maybe 13 months ago, that are down 80 or 90%. You know, look at Palantir. Look at um, Peloton. So, you know, we've been using the term stealth crash in the market in the or uh, stealth crash in the class for like two months now. And it wasn't my term. I saw someone on TV say it. But this is, you know, when we see these markets turn right in the stuff that's garbage turns first. (laughs) You know, basically the companies that don't make money and don't have a prayer. Well, they start to go down first and they all started to go down last year. Yeah, the and the good companies like the Apples and the Microsofts are the last to go down. And that's what we started seeing, you know, a month or two ago. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting a bunch of emails. Um, I just have, you know, I'm getting a bunch of emails. So I have to go over a couple of these guys, but um, this is you guys that are watching. So uh, basic questions here that I'm getting. Uh, yes, the Benzinga trading school comes with Benzinga Pro with all the lessons with Mark, pretty much like three to four hours a day, Q and A sessions, office hours, uh, Nancy's in the chat, emotional training. Gentlemen, you're preaching to the choir. Your course continues to be helpful, Mark. So Nancy is a, uh, she just joined the school, I think about a week or two ago, and she loves you, Mark, just like everybody Oh, else. is that but, Nance? Yeah, Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, I don't I don't see the chat, but uh, I recognize <laughs> the name. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely something, guys, if you want to try it, we're giving everybody a seven-day money-back guarantee. Um, and shout out here to, to uh, Jay Rock here. For joining welcome <laughs> welcome to the family jay um but uh yeah i'll post the link in the chat guys if you want to join in the contacts but yeah mark so that's the thing like the emotional side of trading is really what you never hear about it's it's really what um what i feel that a lot of retail traders uh do struggle with because if you don't have the experience and the confidence and that background you know especially during a bear market then you know, you don't have it, right? You can't just buy that sort of experience in the market. So um, from the feedback that I get from people, you know, this is really helpful. I know it, it's helped me a lot. And even that, let's say I trade options, right? Because I, that's what I do. I trade options. But I've learned a lot of, of uh, analysis on charts with the trading school that have helped me find better entries when I'm buying my calls or buying puts. Um, because if you can't measure the chart, if you can't dance to the beat that the market is singing, then you're just out of tune, Mark. Right? You need to dance with the beat. So the way I look, the way I look. <laughs> well, you don't want to see me dancing. That's uh, <laughs> if you ever <laughs> see that, you get an automatic <laughs> refund. Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, what I'm saying is that if I, since I've been able to read the charts better, I've been able to get better entries on my calls and puts. So that does obviously, you know, help me a lot. And even that, even if I'm trading options. And I know that for people that trade crypto, it helps them too, especially because it, you know, options on uh, Bitcoin are coming out. And even, you have even some Forex traders, I think, right? You have some people that. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we pretty much every style. 
um, I think at this point we have some students that are, are uh, involved now. Yeah, so um, that's great. So we got that out of the way, Mark. But um, as far as like, I mean, you know, a lot of the students there, you've seen a lot of the progress with some of them. Um, the sessions, how would you describe the sessions that you're doing right now? We have the, the lecture, right? And after the lecture, you have the Q&A and then it's like a open market discussion. People give out tickers or how does it work? Well, because it's, the market's been so crazy, basically the, the first thing we do is probably do a 10 or 15 minute review of just the market, just you know what's been going on. Um, typically when the, or when the school was first designed or whatever, the idea was to just start with the lecture, the first thing. But, you know, when things are going crazy like they are now, people want to kind of, they don't want to, you know, they kind of want to know what's going on. So we basically now, because things are going so crazy, we start about with 10 or 15 minutes looking through it. But then what I like to do is go through the lectures and we talk about the fundamentals. You know, what are important levels? What are, what is momentum? So the first lesson is we just talk about the philosophy, which is, I can just tell you right now is things aren't as complicated as you think they probably are. If you can understand supply and demand, you know, you can figure out how to make money doing this. The second lesson is we just talk about levels and certain, for some reason, certain price levels are more important than others. The third lesson is we talk about trends. The fourth is momentum. The fifth is pattern. The sixth is investment psychology, like today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about macro market analysis. And then the um, on Thursday, it's the trading models. But we talk about the fundamentals and until maybe, you know, I don't know, 745 or 8 o'clock or whatever. And then we look at the market. So the idea is this continuous repetition, repetition of the fundamentals and really getting them ironclad in your brain or your subconscious, so to speak, because they don't change as long as there are markets there are always going to be certain price levels that are more important than others. I mean, I could look at almost any chart or any at almost any chart and just see it, like, look, isn't it freaky now that like even Microsoft, uh, I mean, these were, these were going to be the last ones to fall, right? We, we had, Oh yeah. We're in a full and... blown market meltdown here, dude. I mean, no, and it's going to keep going lower too. I mean, I think we're setting up for a little bit of a, of a rebound. But let me go back to in this inflation, right? So let's all let's go back to inflation and let's talk about why the market has been so weak. And this is something that we talk about a lot in the class. In no matter what they tell you about inflation, it's worse than people think. Just like a year ago, everyone was saying, "Oh, it's transitory. It's transitory." All right, this year is the CRB index. This is a very well-followed uh, measure of, of inflation. This is a basket of everything from oil to steel to, you know, to wheat. Now, if you listen to the quote-unquote experts or the pundits, they're going to tell you, oh, inflation is running, you know, 9 10%. The CPI I, on Thursday is coming out. I think it's going to be, you know, the estimates rate percent. My guess is going to be way higher than estimate, way higher than thought. Now, I don't want to scare people here, but all of a sudden people have thrown been throwing around the terms called hyperinflation. Now, I first saw it on TV yesterday. We've been talking about this in the class for a while, and this is not something to joke about. This is serious stuff. So anyway, the experts are saying inflation is running eight, nine to nine, ten percent year to day, whatever. This index in two weeks is up nine or 16%, right? Is that the right math here? So 265 to 310. 265 to 310 in two weeks. I mean, this is a serious move here. You know, this is this is a big deal. So let's see, 265 to 310. So that would be 45 divided by. 365. You can confirm this on your own calculators. That's 12, actually 12% in two weeks. I mean, that's a huge move. So how do you get 12% in two weeks to 10% annualized? So just like those uh, Tyson food numbers kind of gave us some insight that inflation was worse than expected by, or 
than thought or anticipated. By looking at these charts, it's a different way of kind of seeing the same conclusion, right? Now, where does all this come from? What is the main cause of this inflation? Well, it's the increase in energy prices in oil, obviously. So oil is ripping higher, you know, everyone knows it. Everyone and their grandmother knows it now. You know, I mean, I just filled up my truck yesterday. It was, you know, four Oh five a gallon. So I don't know. We, we have students Rodrigo in Hawaii that are like, Oh, it's like seven or eight dollars. Well, I mean, gallon. you're talking about gas, dude. Eggs are like double, you know? So I started growing my own chickens here, man. That's, that's <laughs> so it's to getting out yeah, of control, well, man, this inflation. Yeah. You know, my wife sent me to the supermarket the other day to get chicken to cook on the grill. And dude, it was like this pack of four chicken breasts was like $21, you know, and they were cooked and, you know, or not even cooked. Well, whatever, things are going up. But here's what I want to show you about why another reason why I think inflation is worse than expected. So here's oil. And now we have a couple different what we call headwinds these days going on so a couple things here well everyone's talking about ukraine 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 that's obviously part of it but don't believe all the hype this inflation was going into hyperinflation even before this happened so one thing is we have a monetary problem in other words there's too much money in the economy that's going to drive up prices this comes from the government's, you know, in hindsight, wrong idea to just send out too much money to people. So that's one thing. The other thing is you have supply chain issues. That's another thing. But this is what I wanted to point out here with oil. There's talk, right? People are talking about like a lot of the drillers or the refiners are talking about all well, like, you know, well, people are saying wanting to drill more blah, 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 is it politics, is this or that? Well, back here from April to June, April of 11 to June of 2014, oil was really high. It was pretty much right where it is now, give or take. It was $108 a barrel. So what happened? All the big oil companies just produced a lot of oil and stored it, and they ended up glutting the market. And that, this is a long-term chart here. This is a two-year period where it just you know, wasn't good to be in the oil market or in energy. So a lot of the same people are still running the same companies. So now that oil is up, they're hesitant to start pumping more, even if they could. They don't want to have a repeat of this. Um, now let's go to yet another headwind. As the stock market goes down, all the big shot, you know, hedge fund guys and hedge fund managers and institutional money managers are going to start saying, well, where should we put our money? Well, stocks have been going down. Commodities have been going up. Let's go into commodities. Money chases performance. So we have that going on as well. So there's some, you know, headwinds here. Uh, and I just... I don't see this inflation thing stopping anytime soon. So now people are probably saying, should I still buy DBC? Blah, 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 blah. Like I said before, yes, I still think it's a good thing to get into DBC for a longer term. And um, you've probably heard stuff about the wheat market. And we could go over and look at wheat because there's this stuff that's going on is really kind of a big deal. It's not just about oil or money. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, we look at wheat futures here, and these things have been in a, you know, a parabolic rise. They actually went lock limit up for two days. So lock limit up is what happens in futures markets where there's some, such a frenzy, there's such a buying thing going on that they actually don't even open trading. 
They let like one trade happen to set the price and then they just shut trading for the rest of the day. It happens in the stock market. You might see something that's called like a volatility halt. Um, and basically the market just kind of closes trading just to make sure, you know, there's not some big error going on or people aren't freaking out. So here we have wheat, right? And the Ukraine and Russia are the world's wheat basket or bread basket, so they say. And here we have wheat that's gone up, you know, 50, over 50% in two weeks. And this is not just like a crazy move. This is a big part of the world's population can't afford to buy food anymore. And if we go way back to, I think it was 12, 2012, maybe, um, where Russia went into the Ukraine before and we had these big wheat shortages, that led to the food uh, shortages in Africa and Northern Africa, and there were famines and riots. And so anyway, so wheat was locked limit up for two days. They finally reopened the market today. We saw some big profit taking. And I don't know, maybe this is kind of found at top here, because if you're, a, if you're a farmer, you're looking at these prices and you want to kind of lock them in. But there's just a lot going on, man. I, it's like, I don't even know where to begin. There's so, so much going on. So let's yeah, go into the stock market now. Yeah, just really quick problem. for um, for those that are that are asking, um, Mark Petrino is able to. I mean, there there are things that happen across the board, right? And it doesn't mean that we're just trading like you know an actual equity. Sometimes Mark will pull out like a commodity ETF or anything that's related to what's happening that is tradable. Um, it just depends what's happening at that time. Because someone's asking why why are we looking at these things right now, Mark? Well, it's because these are the things that we're trading right now. <clears throat> but in two, three months, we might be looking at something else, right? Yeah, we look at these things because this is where we get our ideas from. You know, we 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 get our ideas from like uh all right, so now we see that there's this like aggressive buying going on in commodities, right? Let's think about this for an idea. Or say we're not wheat traders, and I don't expect you to be a wheat trader, you know. Um, but this is how we get our ideas. So what do we see? We see things spiking. Well, where else might th be things spiking? Well, steel is spiking. So let's look at maybe some of the steel companies. Maybe there's an idea there. Oh, wow, we talked about this and it's already happened. Like this is something we talked about in the class. I guess this this one is probably a little a little um I guess this one is probably over now and I apologize about that but you know in the class we've been talking about playing some of these reversals because even though we have this longer term inflation things can get ahead of themselves and yesterday when we when we were talking about US steel we talked about something that got overdone it got overbought the momentum was crazy to the upside and the oh, you know, the overboughtness in steel led to this reversal, and this led to a trading idea for some of the students. And we have a clear price target, which it got to today. So I would imagine a bunch of them closed out with some profits because it got to our price target of twenty nine, because or twenty eight ninety, because now we go back to our level. Certain price levels are more important than others. So. That's why this was our target price. So, you know, to really find good ideas, it takes a little bit of time and we got to delve through the markets. So we know that we're going to the early, well, we don't know, but we think that there's a good chance we're going to the early stages of this huge inflation. So stuff has gotten overextended and when stuff gets overextended, it reverts. So this was a possible idea here, right? Which came from, the inflation idea. I haven't talked to any of the students today about this, but Tyson Foods was a trading idea that came from inflation. So it's all tied in to each other. And if you really want to be a good trader and really want to you know, profit, you have to understand the markets and the markets go through changes and evolutions. And one of the things we're going through right now is this huge play on inflation. And it can come on the long side it could come on the short side. It could come longer term, like with GBC. It comes. It could come shorter term, like we see some of these quick reversals. 
some of these steel stocks. You know, like this is something we talked about uh, yesterday. Found short-term support here because this was a resistance level. Short-term support again here because this was a resistance level. So, you know, I know for a fact that some of the students made money off of this. So I don't expect you to be a wheat trader, and this is not a class for, you know, just commodities traders. But what I'm trying to say is that in the market, there's always opportunities. Every day somewhere, there's a really good opportunity. Some days there's many opportunities. But one of the ways to find ideas now is based on this whole inflation play. And when this whole Ukraine thing broke, we had panicked buying, you know, aggressive buying. Now, I'm not saying things aren't going to take a break and then resume their uptrend. As a matter of fact, I think that's probably what's going to happen. But, you know, while the market is breaking down, you know, we have students making money off of these stocks that have been overextended to the upside. So there's a lot of different ways to approach the market. So that's what we're doing here. We're not guessing. We're looking into the market for it to tell us what to do, if that makes right. sense. And this, is, and this is really just one um, trade idea funnel, right, out of the different ones that you, um, that you guys come up with, right? Because I remember you were mentioning, like, when you were at the, when you were at the hedge fund there, that in the morning, you guys, like, you know, met up, squared up on the market. What are you looking at? What are you trying, you know, things like that. You just chit chat about what are you guys looking at in the market, right? So I guess that's kind of what you do with these folks, right? So you, you talk about stocks, you formulate ideas, trade ideas, then you whip out the chart and you start doing the whole technical stuff with them, right? Yeah, but under the, you know, the pretense of we let the market tell us what to do. So that's the idea is if we go through all the markets, we find stuff that not perfect, but, you know, odds are you know, better than not, that maybe something is going to go our way. So it's about letting the markets tell us what to do. And it's, you know, it's not just saying, hey, I think that, I think it's time to buy steel stocks. All right, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But when we start looking at the charts and we see, hey, wait a second, you think it's time to buy steel stocks. Say this was um, on Friday. All right, well, why do you think it's time to buy steel stocks? Well, they've been going up a lot. I saw that in some chat room. Uh, Steel Dynamics has made this big move. Well, wait a second. The chart, tell, and the charts never lie. The charts are never wrong. The charts tell us we're really overbought. The charts are telling us, well, wait a second. Maybe we're going to go lower. So there's a lot of different ways to funnel ideas, but ultimately the market is always right. And this is what we need to let our ideas come from. Yeah, and keeping well, I don't, I don't, I don't think we mentioned this, uh, Mark, but you are a a CMT chartered market technician, so um, you, you guys get trained differently, right, on, on the trading side of things for for that stuff, right? For that yeah, we, you know, it's it's um, yeah, you, we study all the different indicators and. Um, you know, like as opposed to studying a company individually per se, where it's like income statement, balance sheet, new right, products. Right. We, to, to me, that stuff is so boring. Um, CMT is more about like just kind of studying the market um, in the and of itself, right? And that's psychology kind of a thing. But yeah. let's think about this. Like, I got another good analogy, I'll, uh, Rodrigo. I got good, good analogies here. When we're talking about going to where to find ideas, Say you're a great fisherman and you come to a lake. Do you go fish where the fish are biting or do you just go to some random place where there might not be fish, right? You go to where the fish are biting. And it's kind of the same thing with the market. We look for where stuff is going on and that's where we get our ideas from. And it just so happens there's been a lot going on in the commodity stocks. So, right. so, so you could say, you, since we are doing the whole analogy thing here, <laughs> um, <laughs> you could say that this is like trying to find the gas station with the cheapest cheapest gas, right? You go to the one that that, that it, would that fall under that analogy world? Hmm. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, kind of. Or maybe we would we should go to where the gas station with the second lowest gas is, fill up a bunch of spare fuel tanks, and when the first lowest runs out, they're going to come to us, and then we're going to be able to resell those people gas at an even higher price. So we're taking advantage of the imbalances or the um, inequilibriums in the market. Now, I'm not suggesting to people they should go, you know, start gouging gas and funneling gas out of people's tanks. But, you know, it's all about just looking at supply and demand dynamics. That's what we we want to do as traders. Um, you know, kind of a dumb or, a, you know, a silly kind of analogy, but we're going to go back to my favorite historical analogy of the medieval market. And say there's a market where all the merchants or farmers come from all around to buy or sell their goods. And, you know, they all meet at the centralized local place. That's the exchange. Now, say like a particular merchant sees that, oh, gee, you know, typically we get eight or nine, you know, wagon loads of corn coming in. But this morning, there's only two wagon loads of corn coming in. Hmm. That merchant might say, well, I think there's going to be a short of corn. The corn might go up in price. So they go back into town quietly. They buy up the corn. And then when the market's open and there's a corn shortage, price goes up and these merchants can sell the corn to other people at a higher price. Now, they might not be an expert on corn, but it's just a matter of understanding that there's going to be an imbalance in the market and taking advantage of it. And as technical traders, that's what we... You know, that's what we do. Yeah, and even think you have a, you guys have a different name for it, right? Um, equilibrium trading. Yeah, but I call it market equilibrium analysis because that's what we're doing. We're looking for equilibrium. I don't like the term technical analysis. It's I just too, think it's broad. too broad. Yeah, it's too broad, definitely. Well, I mean, I think it's really good that you kind of simple, you, you simplify everything down because there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of, gurus a lot of tiktok kids and things like that you know and, and it's and it's really easy to fall for that right because it's social and you're like oh well you know this is cool right but when it comes to money you know i i'd rather go with someone who's like a professional you know who's been on the institutional side who, who, who has that experience but i guess you know benzinga is like a little gold mine that's before i even found benzinga i was like you know kind of wandering around there at different sites but um, Benzinga does have that nice community feeling. So, I mean, for the folks that are here, I'm just saying, like, you guys are, are spoiled, like, for real, um, with this stuff with the school Mark is doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been going pretty well. So, I'm, uh, so far, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with, with everything because it's nice to, it's not even so much helping people make money, it's helping people, like, not lose money is is almost an even better feeling because you know there's like an old saying right it's like if it sounds too good to be true it probably is and it's so true and i see these you know these um newsletters or these gurus that's like oh if you follow my system you can do this or you know here's how i took my five thousand dollars and turned it into three million dollars you know in six weeks you know and maybe they forget they leave out the fact that their rich aunt died and left them, you know, <laughs> left them a, a big part of that. Um, so one of the things that really kind of got me going a few years ago when I was, when I left the money management industry, because, you know, I just got sick of it. It was, just, it's not a fun place to be anymore now with all the regulations or, or and everything. But, you know, one day I was like, kind of just going through whatever. I don't even remember websites. And I saw this newsletter and it's like, oh, you know, the recommendation I told you about last week doubled in, in money. And um, so I thought, all right, well, that sounds pretty cool. Let me check it out. Now, for every stock, there's a bid and an offer. And this particular stock had gone from one cent to two cents. All right. In theory, mathematically, that's a double. But say a stock is bid one cent to two cents and say someone comes in and sells a hundred shares at the market they're going to get one cent and then say 20 minutes later someone comes in and buys 100 shares of the market they're going to pay two cents on paper 
the stock has doubled, but it hasn't really moved. So for you to go around and advertise that as, you know, my recommendation doubled is frankly downright fraud. You know, that's, that's someone who knows that, well, they're either really stupid or they know that they're, you know, promoting something that isn't legit. Now, the other side of that, I've seen well-respected news writer, newsletter writers, and I'm thinking of a particular example right now, a guy who's, you could almost say is, you know, an industry titan in writing newsletters. And of course, I'm not going to give you the name, but this particular person um, has this thing where they think that if an ETF, uh, let's just bring up an ETF here. If an ETF issues more shares, that's for some reason, you know, a positive thing, right? All right, so let's think about this. So we have, you know, said guru, you're paying however many thousand dollars a year for their newsletter. And they're saying, well, hey, man, I got this thing here. If an ETF starts issuing more shares, if there's more shares outstanding, that's a sign of bullishness that it's going to go up. Now, I don't know if people have heard that, but all right, fine. Now, let's think about this. Wouldn't that mean that the higher an ETF goes, the more shares there would be? Wouldn't that just be such a simple way to make money? Oh, issuing shares. Time to buy. It's going to go up. Issuing shares. Time to buy. It's going to go up. Issuing shares. Time to buy. It's going to go up. Now, this is not someone who's lying. This is someone who just happens to be a great writer. They're not a trader. They're a writer. Like they a write reporter. for a well-known financial institution. Now, the reason why ETF share counts go up or down is based on the volatility. It has nothing to do within the long run, whether they're going to go up or down or not. So, you know, Rodrigo, we have everything from, I think, downright fraud to guys that are working really hard, but don't really understand the market. So that's why I think it was, a, that's why I, like you know, reporters, wanted to be a teacher. That's, that's what we're talking about, right? Like just reporters and things like that. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you look at these financial media people, they're, they're journalists, you know, they might know how to, sell the sizzle or whatever but they don't really know what the yeah what the stake is kind of a it, it it's really not something you want to be trade and, and here's the thing a lot of people when they start they they just assume these are like tra tradable actionable you know uh ideas but you know like one day they'll say i it's just you know one day it's like market falls as investors grow you know concern about such and such and then the next day there's like a little pop and they're like in investors shrug worries about such and such so um, they just, you know, do the headline stuff. But I think that the technical side of it that you do is really where the, like you said, the truth is in the charts, right? Yeah, Price because, action. yeah. And one of the main things that I teach is that, you know, you shouldn't listen to these so-called gurus. I mean, there's a few people I listen to. Like if Mario Gabelli comes on TV, I'm going to listen to him because he's a brilliant guy. Um, but for the most part, these gurus are a dime a dozen. Like I was just telling you, this one well-known guru is like, oh, you know, an ETF is issuing more shares. That's a bullish sign. It's That has nothing to do with anything. The fact that an ETF is issuing more shares is not bullish or bearish. It's a reflection on its volatility. It has nothing to do. It, there's no, and I was a market maker. You know, I know how this stuff works. And I don't think this person was lying. I just think that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. So they just try to come up with something. Um, so, yeah, I guess they just don't have the, the background in, right. you know, in what's going on. And, you know, you, you go back to these headlines and I think that I, you know, I wish I had recorded this because when all this Ukraine stuff started, when it looked like it was just going to be kind of a contained thing and it was, you know, people were hoping, all right, it's just going to be a few days and, blah, blah, blah. In this period right here, all we heard about, you know, oil prices are up, oil prices are up, oil prices are up, oil prices are up. 
tensions in the Ukraine. I mean, you couldn't have avoided it, right? But yet for this one month period, oil really went sideways. It didn't go anywhere. And then the headline I wish I had captured, I think was on was on these two days right here. Oil up on tensions in Ukraine. Next day, oil makes a big drop. Oil finds a bottom because of tensions in Ukraine. I mean, that's that's really just preposterous. That is just really asinine reporting. So it's like, all right, so it's up because of Ukraine, but now it's down, but not so much of Ukraine. And, you know, I'm trying, you know, I'm being a little facetious and it is a little bit comical, but a lot of people have lost a lot of money by following, you know, these guru, these quote unquote gurus and, you know, they, they just end up losing money. I mean, it's almost, there's not a day that goes by where you can't find something that the media is misreporting. And like I said, you know, maybe they're not being dishonest, but a lot of them just, they just don't understand the, the way the markets really work. And I mean, I don't know, I guess I take it for granted because I'm someone who was actually trading in the markets for a long time. But I think, you know, I think that's another good reason why people should join the class, Rodrigo, is because you want to get to the point where you don't need to listen to what these idiots on television or in social media are saying. And, you know, I'm sorry for saying idiots, but, you know, you're going to get to the point where you can make your own decisions. And it's not as hard as you think. You know, two, three months in the class, people have really kind of changed the whole way they look at a lot of this stuff. You know, things they used to think were really complicated, all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, hey. Man, yeah, yeah, that's not as complicated as I thought after all. So that's and, that's kind of what's very satisfying to me or gratifying is, you know, yeah, making money for people is great. And making helping people not lose money is even more appealing. But teaching people how to think on their own is really kind of what I want to do. Because like I said, you know, Rodrigo, everyone's got a different style. But it really just, it's not as complicated as people think. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, curing viruses or figuring out the gravitational fields of black holes. We're just thinking about supply and demand. You know, if there's more demand than supply, it goes up. If there's more supply than demand, it goes down. And it's, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not that complicated. So. Yeah. And, and there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot of misinformation, you could say, right? You know, it's very easy for people to fall into this trap, right? Of following a guru or things like that. So basically you teach them how to fish, right? And you show them all, you show him pretty much um, the, the basic simple things that really end up mattering, that, that matter at the end, right? If you try to chase these headlines, you're just going to end up getting hurt. And that's not a strategy, right? To chase these headlines from reporters and things like that. I guess it's, be it's way better to do it with a, an actual technical strategy, a plan, insight, research, and you do that every day with the people at the school. So um, I think that's really more helpful to traders, to retail traders specifically, especially if they're new, than to just give them a thousand different headlines and with, without no context, just, you know, this happened because I think it happened and no actual education on, on what's happening behind the scenes, if that makes sense. Yeah, be, yeah, because a lot of the times when things move, there really is no, no huge fundamental reason behind it. It's just supp the supply and demand dynamics. You know, say a big buy order comes into the market or a big sell order comes into the market. It might have nothing to do with what's going on in Ukraine. Like here's Apple for today. You know, if you were watching the media, it'd be like, oh, you know, Apple's up on, you know, I don't know, ceasefire talks in the Ukraine. Apple down on oh ceasefire talks are not as good as thought. You know, I, I think that the media, you know, you, people have to understand this, right? And this is where the media is, and not just in finance and wherever politics or whatever, but you know, especially for finance, they're not really there to teach you. And they might think they're teaching you, and they might be regurgitating what they heard somewhere else. But most of the time, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I can tell you this. In my experience, 
there aren't a lot of institutional traders that are sitting around saying, oh, you know, Ukraine talks on, buy, buy, buy. Ukraine talks off, buy, sell, sell, sell. You know, most of the time on the like really sophisticated, you know, trading desks, no one's even paying attention to the news. It's like, you know, you got a job to do. You're not there like trying to, like you just said, you know, chasing headlines. I think that's a good, a good expression for that, chasing headlines. Oh, you know, I'm looking at Apple here and I just see something that kind of sticks out of me as bearish. So let's look at this. We go and do our technical patterns. Now, a lot of people don't understand technical patterns. They think they're like, you know, tea leaves or some kind of a mis mysterious thing. But if patterns are understood correctly, they just show supply and demand dynamics that are going on in the market. And that can give us insight into where the future is going. Let's just think about a chart. This is Apple. Each one of these rectangles is a day. As time goes by, which is what's going on here, we record the new price. Okay. So this kind of shows which way the trends are going. Now, what really sticks out at me and gives me, you know, a little more, uh, I guess, conviction that the market is going to continue to go lower. Because remember, this is the biggest stock in the market, is we're forming what we kind of call or what we call an, a descending triangle pattern. Now, what I teach the students is that it's not important to remember the names of these patterns. No one's going to pay you because you remember the name. But what is important is understanding the supply and demand dynamics. Now, this here in Apple tells us something. So we talked about certain price levels are more important than others. This is just a fundamental of markets. For Sometimes we know why, sometimes we know. Tyson chicken, we saw $100 level was important. Makes sense, right? Nice round level. Here we have, for some reason, when Apple got to 157 back in September, it hit resistance. Went lower, went higher. Once it breaks this level, we have a lot of people that sold at 157 that start to think, you know, I made a mistake. I have seller's remorse. I want to buy my stock back. But I'm not going to buy it back unless I can buy it back for the same price that I bought it at. So once it goes higher, we have remorseful sellers placing buy orders at their sell price. In this case, it was 157. So we can see 157 has become support there. 157 has become support here. 157 has become support once again. In the aftermarket, we're at 156.56. So what do we see here? Well, fundamental and now our, you know, market principle number one, certain price levels are more important than others. For some reason, 157 was resistance, and then it became support. Another principle, levels that were resistance can turn into support because of seller's remorse. Now, what do we see here with this descending triangle pattern? What does this show us? Well, buyers have basically hung out around 157. You know, obviously there's a lot of buyers and sellers in the middle here, but just say, you know, the, the big pack the big group of investors that want to buy have hung out at 157 and they've been kind of cool you know all right well i'm gonna hang out if they come to us i'll buy it if not i don't care so the buyers have been kind of complacent they've been waiting for the sellers to come to them at, at the same time what do we have here with this descending line this is why we call this a descending triangle pattern because we have this descending line Think about this. Here, there were sellers that were willing to sell for 183. When we get to here, there's sellers willing to sell for 175. When we get to here, there's sellers willing to sell for 167. This, as time goes by, sellers have become more aggressive. The buyers have been complacent. The sellers are becoming more aggressive. Now, regardless of what market you're in, whether it's the stock market, the crypto market, the housing market, if you have complacent buyers or buyers that are just like chill, and you have sellers that are becoming really antsy and getting more and more aggressive, it sets the stage for a move lower. So that tells me there's a good chance Apple is going to, you know, over the next few days, break this level and go lower. 
And it wouldn't be surprising because with this inflation thing we have going on, this bearish for the market, not surprising to see some of these big stocks start to set up and looking like they're going lower. I mean, frankly, one of, you know, one of our students asked today about like, you know, I've been long this DBC now, you know, I got a nice profit on it. I think they bought it around 23, you know, now it's at 28. Should I sell it? And, you know, I, I just can't see of any news coming out. That's all of a sudden going to make me think, Oh, gee, all of a sudden, we don't need to worry about inflation anymore. So right. if there's any scares, it's probably going to be the upside. So, yeah, definitely. Hope that, uh, I hope uh, that makes sense to people, Rodrigo. I'm not confusing everyone, but no, no, th this is definitely um, some really good stuff here. And someone's just asking me really quick, where do you see uh, Mark's uh, trade idea? So I just want to show them really quick, <clears throat> Mark. So I'm in the trading school. That's the portal where you have all the education, all the Recordings, Q and A sessions, office hours, okay. Um, and if you click chat here at the top, right next. Yeah, to Rodrigo, go to Mark's trading ideas in chat because I want to just show you something. If yeah, you go back to, okay, okay. So let me just see here. Um, now you'll see that on Friday, I talked about how. All right, so I was anticipating this move that we had here on Monday, and a lot of the people in the class were, too. And here's why. And if, you know, I, I post some of my, um, or some of the trading ideas in there. So, Rodrigo, can, it should be on the same day, um, a chart of XLK. Mm -hmm. Should just be uh, right above that. Yeah, I see it. Okay, so That's post that. All right, so that is right here. So this is what Rodrigo just posted is what I put on there on somewhere over the weekend. I don't remember, but it you know it showed Friday's action. So what kind of clued me off that we were going to get this big sell-off on Monday was on Friday, we really started to break this short-term support level. And that's why I put their support breaking. And this is these few days right here. So basically for five days in a row, one, two, three, four, five, we held support. And then on this day, we started to break. So that's what Rodrigo just posted there. That's XLK. Um, now, Rodrigo, if you please look at the next chart, should be XLC, which is the communication services sector. And we can see the same thing, support for one, two, three, four, five days. And on Friday, we broke the short-term support. So that was another thing that told us that we could have a good move. Now, Rodrigo, if you go down one more chart, which, and this is all from Friday, uh, what do we have next? Is that consumer staples or out there? All right. So believe it or not, on Friday, this big move, um, and that was this move right here. So this is today. So let me just give you an arrow here. So this move right here is where I put on the chart their big move higher. Believe it or not, this was actually a bearish signal for the market. Why? This is what we call a flight to safety. And sometimes these things happen. And it showed us that this big move was coming on Monday, big move down. Money starts flowing out of things that are perceived as risky and into things that are perceived as more safe, like healthcare. So this move here, actually, you guys probably, I don't know if you guys can see my chart, but the move, the move on Friday up was a move, was it was actually bearish for the market. And then one more chart there, Rodrigo. The next one down should be consumer staples. And again, this is all on the same day. Um, yeah, and you see that big move higher in consumer staples there on Friday? That was a bearish signal too. So when we look at these different sectors, it can kind of tell us where the broader markets are going to go. And that's actually what our class is tomorrow morning. We're going to be reviewing this stuff. Tomorrow is class seven which is um, a market sector thing. 
So there's this ongoing thing. It's not just like, oh, like, here's my trade idea. If it works out, I'm going to tell, keep talking about how great I am. And if it doesn't work out, I'm just going to ignore you. And hopefully you never come back. You know, it's an ongoing thing with the markets. It's, you know, it's ongoing and markets change, but there's always ideas happening. And I think that this was a good example because let's, you know, this move on Monday, which we were talking about on Friday happening was not just a regular move down. I think it was the biggest move lower, like literally in years in one day. So I know some of the guys or some of the students made money on that. And some of them made money actually by going long things like an inverse ETF, an ETF that goes up while the market goes down. So it's this ongoing thing, man. If you just, Rodrigo, if you just do like, oh, here's my book, see you later. It's like, yeah, man, you know, any, anyone's a genius in hindsight, but you, you got quizzes here too and everything. Right. So, um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. So I just wanted to show them where they could find the trade. And there's another one here called another one called student, uh, trade ideas where the students are posting their research. I just wanted to show that really quick, uh, to them, Mark, but let's go ahead and, um, share your charts. I know you were uh, going over some things there. Yeah, let me just wrap up with a few things here because I actually, believe it or not, well, I shouldn't say that because there's nothing to not believe, but I have a conference call with some of my buddies who are um, commodities traders, and I just want to get see if I can get a little more insight on some of this stuff before tomorrow morning. But I just want to um, just go over some more things here and just kind of see what we're looking at. All right, so first thing, we want to look at when I'm, when I'm going in tomorrow morning, this is what I'm looking at just to get ideas, just to figure out what's going on in the market. You can't go into the market with a set notion. Like here's what I'm going to do today. So the first thing I'm probably going to look at, well, the first thing I'm definitely going to look at, frankly, is oil. What's going on with oil. And here we have oil. And, you know, I talked about the headwinds and why this could go much higher. You know, we have a lot of things going against us here. We have supply chain issues. We have monetary policy issues. We have, as money comes out of the stock market, it's going to be going into here. That's going to be driving things higher. So, you know, oil for the time being looks like it's going to continue to move higher. I'm going to take a look over at natural gas. Let's see what's going on there. This is, you know, slowly chugging its way higher. I know some of the students are in this. And, you know, Rodrigo, a lot of the students obviously are not futures traders, but anything we look at in the commodities, there's something that can be done in, or usually can be done in the ETF market. So this UNG kind of follows, not perfectly, but for our intents and purposes, good enough, follows natural gas. So if this stuff in Ukraine, you know, doesn't work itself out soon, and right now it certainly doesn't look like it's going to, I would suspect natural gas is going to keep going higher. So for people that don't trade futures, UNG is an ETF that could be something to watch. Now, we're just going to go through a quick look at the markets here. I'm going to look at the spider. Now, considering the move we had lower, you would have thought there was going to be some kind of rebound today. And it looked like there maybe was going to be, but it hasn't really happened yet. You know, this rebound kind of fizzled out. And then... And, you know, we're going to do this again tomorrow, but we look at the different sectors. And here's, you know, a little bit something that's kind of interesting to think about if we're thinking about, gee, is the sell-off going to kind of come to an end here for a little bit? Well, this particular sector, technology, has reached a level that was resistance in the past. So there's a chance it might be support. Communication services is the other technology sector so to speak. It's also reached a level that was support in the past. So I think that, you know, there's a chance that we're going to take a little bit of a break in the stock market going lower. 
but I also think that um, eventually we're probably going to maybe after a consolidation or a little bit of a move higher to start to go lower again. But, you know, Rodrigo's traders, you know, we, we don't want the market to go lower, but we know that there are opportunities for profits out there too. And in a lot of ways, it's easier to make money on the downside because markets go, go down faster right. than they go up. Right, so, right. So what, what are you going to be looking forward in this week in the school with the members, you know, on top of the education and all that stuff, you know, you scan the markets. What are you guys going to be looking uh, forward to for this, um, this week? Well, I think if we look at these technology support levels, communication services and um, technology, two sectors, right? When people think big tech, big tech is actually not just technology, it's the communication services sector as well. You know, here's the thing. When we get to these important levels, we take, we take a pause. Now, are we going to rebound or are we going to break down and go lower? So I'm going to certainly be watching these levels to see if we get some kind of a rebound. Because either way, we're going to get some kind of a tradable move. You know, and people kind of be like, or, you know, mock me, you know, you know, my not, you know, not traders, but my friends like, oh, you know, you're like, oh, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. Well, when things get into important levels, they don't really hang out at them too long. They tend to either break up or break down in one way or the other. But either way, it could be tradable. And this goes back to what I was saying about not guessing. Let's wait for the market to tell us which way to go. Considering the sell-off we've had and considering that, you know, now the broader media and everyone's starting to pay attention to it finally, you know, like usual, they're three months behind the curve. but these next few days are going to be really important because if this level gives out, then we're going to make another big move lower. But, you know, we've reached a level where there's a chance where we might bounce. Like when we got here, you know, there's a chance we could bounce and we did. So I think that, you know, if I have to put it in one sentence, I would say technology after this brutal beat down has reached a level that may be the bottom. Do I think it's going to be the bottom long term? Probably not. I do think it's going to go lower. Do I think it's going to be a bottom short term enough to have some kind of a tradable bounce? Yeah, I think there's a good chance that that happens. So we're at a pretty, you know, we're in a what we would call a target rich environment, Rodrigo. There's a lot of chaos going on, but as traders, we want chaos because if things are boring, we can't make money. We want stuff that's moving. Right, right. I mean, it makes absolute sense. You have to, like you say, you have to wait for the market to come to you. And you're not chasing trades. You're not over trading. You're finding the right setups at the right. Uh, and you do risk management pretty well, basically. So that's why I do like the risk reward ratio. Um, but yeah, uh, Mark, this has definitely been a great session here. I know yeah, I'm, you're- I'm starting to get some nasty texts from people like, hey, man, my friend's in Singapore. Why aren't you on the call yet? All right, all right. All right. Well, whatever they can wait. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So yeah. So everyone, thanks for tuning in, and um, you know, uh, Rodrigo is going to hang around and answer some questions, and hopefully, I see you all tomorrow morning. I mean, this is if you want to learn about trading and markets, you know, you're not going to find a better time than this to get in because there's a lot going on. So hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Sounds good, Mark. Absolutely. Um, good seeing you here. Thanks for all the work here for the folks. And the all right, Rodrigo. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. All right. All right, guys. Um, so what I'm showing you right now is the Benzinga Pro. It's one of the charting tools they have inside. Uh, the school comes with Benzinga Pro. We were here looking at, uh, there's a chat room here named questions for Mark. So if anybody has questions, you know, you can put them here. We have Q&A sessions, all that stuff. And there are, there's even like notifications here that you can uh, that you can put here for each of the chat rooms. So whenever there is like for example here, I put the notification on Mark's trade ideas, and basically I'm going to get a notification whenever Mark uh, is posting something here. As far as that sound notification, keep you have to keep your school open. 
and it'll have a pop there. Um, but yeah, that's one of the chat rooms that you can use. If you go to the homepage, this is what you'll get. All of the videos of the sessions that are, are upcoming. Uh, for example, you can look at Thursday and we can see tomorrow, right? Thursday, investment strategy and trading systems. And also the Q&A session, Friday, office hours, Monday, uh, you have introduction and philosophy. For, so for those guys that are going to be uh, joining, this would be a great time because you actually get the beginning of the class, the first, uh, the first chapter, introduction and philosophy. Uh, you're welcome, Kenyon. No worries, man. Yeah, great session. Mark is, Mark is great, man. So with him all day in the school, there's, you know, after doing this for a year, let's say you take this whole thing for a year, um, <clears throat> it's definitely going to ha have a huge impact. But I don't know if you guys know, but I'll let you know now. Um, we do have a special for today. So for the first month, $7.97. And then uh, if you do want to keep it every month after that, $147 per month. It comes with Benzinga Pro, live education sessions, the recordings, the chat rooms with Mark. Um, these are, this is where you can find pretty much all the recordings there in the video library. And if you pretty much click on Pro, you can start customizing all this pretty much the way you want it. So there's a tool here called Insiders right here, and it gives you the multiple insider buys, meaning if there is more than one person buying stocks in the company, one insider, like a president and a COO and a VP of marketing and a chief legal officer and a chief marketing officer, all that stuff, a CFO. So it tells you, I mean, that's a pretty bullish indicator. I'm not saying to go and buy every stock you see here, but if you do want to find trade ideas, this is some place that you can get started. And then you bring that back to the school. You talk about it with Mark and the other students and you formulate trade ideas as a community, right? So insider purchases, you also have the insider sales when you see a lot of insider selling and you can pretty much filter this out, right? So you can filter this by a lot of different things. You can search for specific stocks here as well. Um, Mark, do we have access to options charting? What do you mean options charting? Like a contract? Like charting a contract, is that what you mean? So in the calendar, this is another tool on the left side. Again, everything's on the left side. So um, you click on this and this calendar, I have it set up for analyst ratings. So you can set it up for different things here. M&As, retail sales, IPOs, FDA, economic numbers to find out, you know, all these Fed meetings and things like that. Um, these jobs, uh, jobs reports. And <clears throat> so I have it analyst ratings. I can filter this by my watch list as well. So I have a watch list set up. This is one that I made February 15th. So um, you can also have a different watch list here. I would, that other watch list, it was mostly like small stocks. Um, but this is filterable by the date as well. So if I only want to know about the most recent last three months, uh, analyst ratings in my watch list, right? I don't care about a rating from a year ago or six months ago. I care about the most recent uh, analyst ratings on on my watch list because I can f I filtered this by my watch list. So this is what you would get. I have Facebook, Snapchat, Apple, uh, Square, Tesla. There's a, a firm. There's a bunch of different stocks there, um, and these are all the ratings that have come out. It has the analyst firm, the name of the analyst as well. Um, we also have a smart score here and an overall success rate. So basically you can see if this analyst is actually good or worth following or you know, uh, even, even considering right that, that particular upgrade or downgrade. Yeah, shout out, Ted. We'll see you next time. Um, make sure you join the school. And uh, you can see here, buy, overweight, outperform pretty much. You know, I don't see a lot of downgrades here, but uh, there's one downgrade, a couple of downgrades there. Um, more downgrades below. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you can pretty much get a feel, get, it's like a temperature check of what the street is thinking about my particular watch list. This could be a watch list that I'm using for trading, for scalping, for long-term investing, you know, or for whatever it is, swing trading, 
name stocks, doesn't matter. Um, you, this is filterable by watch list, so you can put anything uh, there. So that's another tool that you get. Keep in mind, I'm just giving you places where you can start finding and looking for trade ideas and also analyze your portfolio as well. So um, that was analyst ratings, right? Um, you can filter it by other stuff there. There's a scanner here, pre-market. It's the only one that's open pretty much after pre-market and aftermarket. So you can filter it right there for the session. After hours, we can see what's, what's happening right now. Let's see. Um, you can also filter by sector here. So we can pick a couple sectors here that we want. Also the market cap and price, you can also filter that. I like to put it at least uh, 2 billion in market cap. I try to weed out some of the penny stocks and like all, all these things, you know. Um, and the price above $10, typically sometimes five, but definitely try, I definitely try to stay away from the $1.50 stocks, things like that. And then you have it here, right? So you see basically for the whole session after hours, in these particular sectors that I selected, let's see, Bumble is the one that's going the highest. So let's check it out. I think this is like a dating app. So it says here, why is it moving, right? So we have a, a department here that basically scans the markets and puts all this stuff in pro. And you might see this in other, uh, in other places maybe, but this is really like the source of it. Um, so it says here, Bumble shares are trading higher after the company reported Q4 results showed a 29% increase in Bumble app paying users. So people are paying for this stuff more and it had a nice rip there. So this scanner pretty much, you know, put this here in front of us, 19% after market. Um, will this run tomorrow? I don't know. Um, but you know, this is a good place that you can find things that are moving, right? It looks like match is moving there too. Uh, this is another dating app. So it might, well, it might move in sympathy a bit. You could say, who knows? I don't know when their earnings are, but, um, but yeah, you can start formulating trade ideas here. Right. And these are just the services that I, uh, the sectors that I picked something else that you can do. Let's close this chart. Um, is you go on regular session. And then I do like three months in a period. And I filter this out. Let's say I only want to do energy. I mean, obviously energy is going to be way high. So just as this is just you know an example, right? So if I go to the past three months and I look at the sector for energy for stocks that are that are above two billion in market cap and above ten dollars, these are the stocks that you know, have gone up the most, the most. So HP, it's up 81% in the past three months. Um, so what I do is that I try to catch trends. So I used it for three months. This has been ripping for three months, but you can also do it for one month. And let's just say, you know, energy is already way higher, but let's just do something else, a different sector here. Um, let's do healthcare. So with health, uh, with healthcare, let's see what we have. So for the past month, this company, LNTH, is up 94%. In the past month, I don't know what happened here. There's some news. I'm not trying to dig into it, but um, that's just an example. Let's go to some. This is obviously healthcare. We're going to get some, some biotechs and things like that. So let's try to pick a different sector, industrials. So let, let's pick that. So in the industrial sector, in the past month, the stock that is up the most is CNR. So I'm scanning markets literally, and I'm picking winners, picking winners, and I'm looking into them, and I start doing research. This is where you start doing, you know, your your trade ideas, where you start looking for opportunities in the market. This has been ripping higher from 13 in February 7th to 24th. I don't know what's going on here, um, but definitely want to look into this one. Um, if it's an industrial one. So you see in the bottom here, it gives you a quick summary. If I, I clearly don't know what it is. This is a great summary. If you're trading it or if you just want to look into it, 
It says they construct and sell building materials for the commercial, residential, and repair industries in North America. So it has a link here, and we can go to their page and let's see products. Let's see what they offer metal roofing, metal wall systems, windows, doors, trims, gutters. Okay, fence, railing. They, you know, I could, you know, I could start looking more into them, but this is just an example of how I use the pro, right? And you can start looking for trade ideas. There's another one here, Bloom Energy. This I, I am familiar with this one. Um, they do have some really good management, I think, uh, for this particular company. This is oil too. O oil kind of related maybe, but, um, but yeah, you can see these stocks have a one month. So this is a one month trend. So what I'm doing here is that I'm basically looking in the past month and seeing what is what is going higher and what is holding up, not what went higher and is basically crashing down. So this this particular one does look like it's in a good trend, if, you know, so, but you can start going through the list. You have a long list and you can pick any, any sector that you want, or you can just let it run free, right? No sectors. And then you'll just get the biggest winners overall. You can do it even, you know, you can do something like, you can bring it down to five dollars, and or zero really, and start getting these other types of stocks. Um, Tellurian, I'm familiar with that one. It's up 71 percent in the last month. Um, so you have a bunch of different trade ideas here that you can start finding. Bring back to the school, um, even if you want to invest. Justice, yeah, I mean, you could do something like in the past year. Um, you know what's been what's been moving, things like that. So there's just a lot of. Uh, trade ideas and setups you can get just from the scanner, not just for trading pre-market and aftermarket, but for looking at maybe uh, some shorter time frame swings or, you know, you, some of these trades, what I do is that I buy calls short term and it's really more of like a short trade. Um, but if you want to look deeper into it to do more research, you can do it. You have a lot of information here inside of Benzinga Pro. Right now, we just added here short interest. I want to give a huge shout out for getting this in here. You guys don't like, I mean, you know, this kind of data, just for you guys to know, um, of course, costs us a lot of money to even have here up here. So we have here the short interest data. Let me just zoom in here. It looks like, well, let's look at something a little bit that's more shorted. I don't know. What is heavily shorted right now? Peloton. Pretty sh no, not really. Um, I don't know. Let's see AMC. What's happening there? So you are getting some short interest here um, for AMC or whichever stock that you want to look at. Um, let's look at Facebook. I'm sure maybe that one. Okay. Well, I mean, it looks like only, yeah. I mean, here you can see pretty much everything, the volume days to cover. So this is something that was just added, guys. It, it is included with the trading school. Um, and yes, the special that we have is just for today. It's seven for, uh, 797 for the first month and then 147 every month after that. So I'll leave the contact if you guys uh, want to join. I think it's definitely important. You know, if you are starting out, get the education. Don't blow up your account trying to figure it out. It just doesn't work out that way um, from experience, you know. So uh, thanks a lot for being here, guys. Definitely appreciate you guys being here. Great session for Mark. All the students here uh, that are here, shout out. We'll see you guys in class tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we have a great lesson there with uh, Mark. Let me just quickly go over this one. What is it? What is it? Today was investment psychology. Let's go here. So, Right, today's Tuesday, so Wednesday, this is what we have. Market principles analysis and sentiment, March 9th. There, so guys, any questions? Uh, we'll put the contact in the chat, but thanks for joining. We appreciate you guys being here uh, and shout out to all the current members that are here, all the actual students, um, continuing the education outside of the school. Amazing to see that folks. So. Uh, thanks for being here, and we'll see you guys on the next time.